Hello everyone. Let us continue our discussion on vibration analysis using AFI software. So we have already discussed how to model a structure in ANSYS. And that was in the first lecture. And then we did also um, model analysis. From that analysis, we obtained mode shapes, uh, natural frequencies. And then in the second lecture, we used the same model and the extracted mode we use for model superposition. Now, if you quickly recall, this is the layout of the structure that we modeled. It's a G plus 3 building and uh, the floor height is 3 meter. I'm not going into the details of that because we have already uh, modeled it and then uh, did the time history analysis. So, uh, this is the elevation of the building. Then, uh -huh. <coughs> today we are going to learn how to do response spectrum analysis in ANSYS. Now, for that, again, the steps are you can see on your screen. So, we need to first calculate the acceleration response spectrum for the ground motion we consider in our analysis. And then, uh, using that spectrum, we'll do the analysis and find out the response of the structure. So, first we do model analysis of the structure because anyway, we'll be using natural frequencies because uh, this response spectrum analysis solves uh, single degree of freedom system and then uh, from the response of the single degree of freedom system uh, we find out the response of the structure so the equation of motions uh, for this structure originally in its generalized coordinate then we do eigen analysis to convert it in the model coordinates so in the second step we do the model analysis of the structure to get the uh, model mass because we will be using the model mass to solve this response spectrum and then um, combine them different modes using different modal combination rules. And if you recall, uh, we discussed different options. You can consider the maximum response in a particular mode and then uh, you can take the absolute sum but that's often very conservative and there is no um, restriction that all the modal response will attain its peak at the same time point so it does not justify why we should consider the maximum response in each mode and sum them up then we discussed SRSS rule if you recall and then uh, CQC rule so these are different modal combination rules that uh, we discussed in our uh, theory class Today, we will use them to find out the response of the structure. So, once we have the modal analysis, then we apply modal combination rule in the third step. And then, uh, we find out the response in three orthogonal directions. And that gives us the uh, solved response. So, output from this analysis is the maximum response uh, at different locations. So, once we have the structure model, we know the node numbers. So, we identify the nodes at which we want to find out the response and then at that particular location we find out the maximum response using response spectrum concept. So, with that background, let us now um, go back to the ANSYS model and let us see how we can um, apply the response spectrum uh, and then do the analysis. But for that, we first need to develop the response spectrum and in this analysis, we consider El Centro earthquake. And here you can see on your screen, uh, this is the time history record of El Centro earthquake. We consider the uh, major component of the earthquake and then using that, we find out the response. Now here again, uh, you can see the acceleration response spectrum for different time period. Now this is what we developed using a MATLAB code that we uh, um, developed earlier. I am not going into the details of that. You already have that code. But the point I wish to make is that sometimes we use design response spectrum. So, instead of this response spectrum for a particular earthquake, we can use design response spectrum which is given in the code. But today we are not going to do that. We have this response spectrum in the digital format. So, for every uh, time period, we have the value of this response spectrum and then um, 
we use this response spectrum to find out the uh, response of the structure and again uh, we will apply 130 30 rule that is uh, recommended in the code so we have this response uh, along the major direction and then we will apply a factor of 0.3 and we will apply that in the orthogonal directions okay so now let us go to the modeling here you can see uh, we have the modal analysis done so next what we have to do response spectrum so we select the response spectrum then we drag it and we have to link it with the solution of the previous module so now it is done so let us see the model so here you have the model now In this model, we are going to apply the response spectrum that is uh, the support motion. Uh, the supports are there at the foundation level. So, we will select all of them and then we will apply uh, response spectrum along x, y and z. But for that, we have to first define the response spectrum. So, that we will read from a file where we have the response spectrum in digital format. So, let us do that. So we have this uh, response spectrum ready for different time period. So we select it. And then uh, copy it here in ANSYS. So we have the response spectrum. You can see the plot on your screen. Now this response spectrum as I told you earlier uh, we are going to apply at the base so for that we have to select all the supports at the base and then we will apply this response spectrum along the x direction. Once that is done we have to define the same thing along the other two directions but for that we have um, to apply that point 0.3 factor. If you have the response spectrum in the orthogonal direction also uh, that you can apply here but uh, we will use um, the factor 0.3 as recommended in the code. So here is the response spectrum that we apply at the base. So the pink nodes you can see on your screen is where we have applied the boundary condition. This is the foundation label and then we apply the acceleration response spectrum along um, z direction okay so this is actually the vertical direction because our uh, y coordinate is along the vertical direction so let us apply along the vertical direction and then uh, then uh, finally we apply along the z direction So now the model is ready. We have the complete model, geometry, material property, boundary conditions and then we have also applied the response spectrum along three orthogonal direction. So we are ready to solve the structure. And here uh, you can see the option. Uh, we have the option to consider all the modes but uh, we will truncate the mode after 15th value because that is what we have solved. So let us apply that. So, it is applied on all 15 modes and let us solve. Now, here you can see this option. This drop down menu gives you the option for modal combination rules. Here you can see SRSS CQC rules are there. So, you can select it accordingly. So, uh, we select SRSS. And now we are ready to solve the structure. Hmm. 
So you have to select the output for that. We select the corner point, topmost corner point, and uh, that's the outermost corner. And then we also select the innermost corner one by one, as we did in case of time history analysis. So we select this point marked red on your screen and then uh, we can uh, save the total deformation that is the resultant deformation and then we can also save the directional deformation along x, y and z. So that is the outermost corner point marked red. So let us consider the other corner. And then again for this point we can solve the total deformation which is the resultant deformation and also we can save response along x, y and z. Okay. So, for these two points, we will save the response. So, let us solve the structure. So now the solution is done and you can see how fast uh, it has solved once we have the response spectrum analysis compared to time history analysis. In time history analysis at every time point you need to solve to find out the time history response at a particular node. But here because uh, we solve a single degree of freedom system uh, for that reason the solution is much faster and then once we solve for each and every mode and then we combine them. So it is really very efficient in that sense. So let us uh, find out the response and you can see on your screen uh, the total deformation. And then if you see the directional component, so you can also see the response along x and that is the maximum minimum and average response similarly you can also find out the response along y and along z so this is the topmost corner point then uh, we have another point there also you can uh, find out the total deformation as you can see on your screen all three components Remember this solution is based on SRSS rule. So you can select the other option also and then you can compare the results. I leave that exercise uh, for you. Let us see the directional response. Um, so here you can also see the maximum, minimum and average value of the response along x, y and z direction. Now. Uh, this is actually the response you need for design and that's the reason uh, this response spectrum based uh, analysis is also uh, recommended in the code because for a complex structure once you do the model analysis uh, that is the um, maximum information you need for response spectrum analysis and you can easily uh, do it and find out the 
total response at a particular location and uh, it's a directional components also and uh, if you take two different stories you can easily find out um, interstory drift from this peak response and remember in case of design uh, we need to design a structure for the peak response only it may be positive it may be negative but we need the maximum response and uh, that's the reason uh, we don't need uh, response at each and every time point uh, if we can uh, quantify the maximum response uh, fairly accurately then we can use that information um, for our design so mm, this clearly shows you how we can uh, use the response spectrum and find out the response of the structure now uh, again uh, you can uh, use this example and you can try with different other options in fact in this case uh, if you if you notice uh, we did not define the damping right because uh, this damping was defined uh, at the response spectrum generation level the response spectrum that we used for 5% uh, damping and then uh, once that is done then uh, we use the mode shapes to find out the response at a particular node otherwise in case of uh, time history analysis in that module itself we need to define the uh, damping of the structure so this is the difference here uh, at the generation of response spectrum uh, we define the damping so if you have different damping in different modes just uh, i leave that uh, problem for you just think how you can incorporate that and uh, find out the response in reality uh, if we have a structure we have multiple modes and uh, in those modes it is most unlikely that we uh, encounter same level of damping so that i uh, leave it for you these issues are normally discussed in earthquake resistant design uh, this is not a design course so we are not going into the details of that but uh, the analysis is all the same so the same response spectrum analysis we use there so you can just have a exercise at your end and just think how we can uh, do that uh, using uh, this option available in uh, softwares so this example clearly shows you how you can use response spectrum analysis to find out the response of a structure so uh, with that uh, i hope um, this uh, problem is clear to you you will be able to model different other structures and then um, apply response spectrum at the support point and then find out the response just before i close uh, i wish to remind you that in this example uh, we apply the same response spectrum at all the supports in reality if the physical extent of the structure is uh, such that uh, one support experience a different excitation than another support then in that case we have to select individual supports and for that we have to define the response spectrum that also you can do uh, using this commercial package but again those issues are not uh, our concern at the moment because our focus is on structural vibration analysis and for that uh, i hope the problem statement is clear and how we solve that using uh, different software packages also clear so you can try different other uh, structures and find out the response using ansys so with that let me close here uh, we'll have one more lecture and there i will show you some other applications i hope this uh, uh, is clear to you i recommend all of you to try at your end thank you very much